it is. The key words here are in hindsight. In hindsight, as you reflect on the season that has transpired before us, um, I don't think it's been, it was the right way to go. You can't blame the NBA or anybody else for taking chances in light of COVID-19 and how it's compromised so many different things uh, throughout the world, including the world of sports. But in hindsight, as you reflect on it, I agree with Mark Cuban, not only with what he said about that, but how he articulated it even further when he highlighted that it should have just went one to 20. Let's take the top 20 teams in the NBA, let them all in the playoffs for this one year and go with it from there as opposed to, you know, just having a play in between, uh, you know, seeds seven, eight, nine and ten. Because to me, you're devaluing the regular season to some degree. Because if you're a seventh or eighth seeded team and your record is a top eight team as a top eight team in your conference, all of a sudden you're the last two seeds and you have to battle just to be in with a ninth and a tenth seed. Well, then what are you saying there? I don't think that that's the, that's the message that you should want to send. If anything, you expand the participants in the postseason with two additional teams from each conference. Make it a solid top 20, you know, you know, one to 20 and go from there. I totally agree with Mark Cuban when he says that. That way you're all in. You play your playoff game, do a best two or three instead of a best four. I mean, I'm sorry, a best three or five instead of a best four of seven. Handle it that way and go from there. I think that would have been the best way to go. I totally disagree with Mark Cuban, and I totally disagree with you. First of all, to me, Mark Cuban, who's a friend of the show and, and you know, one of the more popular owners in the NBA, sounds, sounds like he's making excuses, sounds like sour grapes, sounds like he's scared they fall out, you know, that they can't climb out of uh, a play-in position. But that's the whole point of the play-in games, the play-in tournament, whatever, mini-tournament. Stephen A., I'm surprised at you. You always talk about people like me devaluing the regular season. You know why we do that? Because it used to be over 50% of the teams in the league make the playoffs. If you want 10 teams in there now out of, out of, out of 15 in each conference, now fully two-thirds of the teams actually get to play a playoff series. That further devalues the regular season. What I'm saying is this, what the play-in tournament does is take teams like the Mavericks, a seven seed, and say, what, you think you can rest as a seven seed? When when did this start happening? You're not a first or a second seed. You're resting for the playoffs? No, no. It It gives teams, lower echelon playoff teams, something to play for. Let's climb out of the seven slot, right? Let's get to six. Teams five and six don't want to fall to seven and eight. Meantime, nine and ten still have a shot. They still have a shot. It turns it into like an NCAA tournament type thing. Hey, can we get hot on one night and play our way in? If seven and eight are, are crying about that, oh, what about that? Well, you know, win that game. Or don't wind up seven and eight. It incentivizes better play. It, it, it disincentivizes tanking. I like it a lot. And the Mavericks are a snake bit this year. By COVID early, they're not the team I thought they'd be by now. I still think that they can surprise a lot of people come playoff time. But you can't sit here and make excuses now. You signed up for it because on paper it was a good idea, and it's turning out that way. Well, I disagree with you. And the reason why I disagree with you is because of COVID-19. I think that this calls for an exception. I'm certainly not advocating that this is something that should be, uh, you know, an indelible mark on, a, on the NBA, whereas you, you keep it in place and, and leave it at that. I'm not implying that. I'm saying that this season calls for compromise. This season has compromised a lot of people. It's compromised their health. It's compromised their availability. It's compromised a lot of different things. And so when you take that into consideration, along with the fact that the season was cut by 10 games, it started about two months later uh, than it usually does, et cetera, et cetera. These are different times. And then you were moving ahead with a level of unpredictability because, remember, we were supposed to originally, under the previous administration, Max, you recall this better than most, where we were supposed to have about 3 million folks vaccinated, uh, and it was a tenth of that. And then, you know, obviously it got off to a slow start, and, you know, we were incredibly alarmed, and then a new administration comes in, and more people are getting vaccinated, but still in all, you know, it's one of those situations where you didn't know how many were going to end up getting vaccinated. Then you had people, not just from, you know, the layman out here or the regular, uh, um, um, you know, citizen 
in the United States of America being a bit reluctant to take the vaccine, but athletes themselves, pro athletes themselves, you know, it was big news when when certain teams decided to get vaccinated, like the Atlanta Hawks and the New Orleans Pelicans and others when they took uh, the vaccine and what have you, because obviously the league couldn't force people to become vaccinated. So you got to take all of those things into consideration. And it's not just about basketball. You're absolutely right in your position. If all we're talking about is just a regular season, uh, you know, as, as that that's, you know, a continuation of what we've been experiencing for years and years and years. That has not been the case. This year has 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 altered a lot of lives uh, um, and a lot of businesses and a lot of professions in a myriad of ways. And because that's the reality, which is why I'm empathetic to what Mark Cuban is saying, because those guys got to go out there and play. And obviously you don't have your health in order. Certain things have gone awry uh, and constantly the season has been compromised by one team or another or one player or another. It's something we've been dealing with over the last year. I understand where he's coming from. But you know what, though, like all you, you all that everything you just said could be true. But then think about this. You know who's not complaining about the play-in tournament? You know, the Jazz, the Suns. You know, they're not complaining. You know why? Because they don't have to worry about it. You know why? Because they're, you know, doing their thing all season. You know who's not complaining about the play-in tournament? The Bulls, right? The 10th seed, the 9th seed, who would otherwise not be in the playoffs? Hey, we at least have a chance. The reason I bring that up is because it looks bad for Cuban and for Doncic to, to start talking about this given the fact that they're the seven seed, given the fact that they're headed for a play-in, False. and they're a very talented, excellent team, no doubt about it. So, like, why is it that they're chirping? Well, it makes them look bad. Well, I would remind you that Luka Doncic showed up on Stephen A's World a couple of months ago, uh, at, uh, and he was an MVP candidate, and he said, I don't deserve it. We're not playing well. So we got to take that into consideration Mm -hmm. and understand he's not an excuse maker. So let's not label him one now. He's not making excuses. Not only that, let's also point to this, Max. There has been numerous players throughout the season, even on winning teams, that have complained about how this season has been ravaged. Kevin Durant was one of them. Remember, he couldn't start one game. And then he played. And then they pulled him off in the middle of a game against the Toronto Raptors because of contact tracing, et cetera, et cetera. You look around the league, even on winning teams, you've heard individuals complaining. Now, they didn't get into the play-in tournament, but they certainly did complain about how the season has been severely compromised. As a matter of fact, there were some players on a record saying, why the hell did we even have a season with all of these question marks up in the air and the way they've got us living, staying in our hotels, not being able to go out anywhere, not being able to fraternize and socialize with the people that we love and care about, even some family members. There have been complaints. It just didn't touch on the play in tournament because it was earlier in the season and the playoffs were not drawing near. So I don't think it's fair to say that Cuban and Doncic are complaining about sour grapes because the playoffs are approaching and they find themselves in this situation. Their complaints are consistent with what the complaints that have been circulating throughout the league since the season began. Yeah, well, they get the right. game up. We'll leave it there, Mavs guys. get their game up. They won't be in a playing tournament. All right. Well, they're playing tonight on ESPN 930 Eastern at Memphis. All right, fellas, we will leave it there when we come back here on First Take. Some NFL to discuss, particularly Stephen A's fave, Jimmy G. What should the 49ers do at quarterback? Justin Fields, Mac Jones, or stay with Jimmy G? We get into it with our First Take draft blitz and more tragedy as players honor the life of Dante Wright and all the other black lives lost. What more can athletes do? We discussed that as well. First take. 